Hello everybody, my name is Matt Muhammad, and you know I've been too happy recently. So in order to stop my ego from inflating, I gotta balance it out with something to make me lose faith in humanity. That'll work. For those who don't know, the Fairly Odd Parents Fairly Otter, which I'll just be calling Fairly Otter from now on, is a 2022 reboot of the Nicktoon The Fairly Odd Parents, created by Butch Autism, can be cured with the power of Christ Hartman. Yeah, if you haven't noticed by now, this guy's reputation is becoming worse and worse every time he opens his mouth. But that has been milked to death countless of times, so I'll not mention it more than a sentence. The original FOP was about 10-year-old Timmy Turner, a boy whose life was so bad that he was granted fairy godparents to distract him from his horrible, horrible life. As many have known, the show suffered from seasonal rot, with the showrunners running out of ideas and started adding random characters to boost ratings, ultimately ending with the show being sent to Nicktoons to die in his 10th season with no conclusion. But then there was life. In 2021, it was announced that a live-action reboot slash continuation of Pop was being made for Paramount Plus, with the trailer coming out the next year. And it looked bad. It just seemed to be another generic Nickelodeon sitcom with Cosmo and Wanda slapped on it just to get people interested. And everybody hated it. It looked like no love or care was put into it, or even to respect the source material. And the trailer portrayed it in the worst light possible. But nevertheless, it came out, and it wasn't that bad. Notice how I didn't say good. I said it wasn't that bad. I didn't say the word good. So the plot is relatively pretty simple. Timmy Turner is now a 20 year old who decides to give his fairies Cosmo and Wanda to his cousin Vivian to help ease her into her new life in Dimsdale because her dad got remarried and moved to Dimsdale and took her with him. However, Viv has to share her fairies with her new stepbrother Roy due to him seeing the fairies when Timmy was giving them to Viv. After that, the rest of the series becomes a generic sitcom, with the siblings' wishes being the cause of the conflict for that episode. We also get reintroduced to Vicky, Timmy's mean babysitter who is now a teacher. It is revealed that she had found out about Mr. Crocker's little chicken scratch and doodles about fairies and Timmy having them, so now Vicky believes in fairies and is trying to capture them. Ending up in a two-part season finale, Vicky uses Crocker's gadgets to get Cosmo and Wanda, and Crocker escapes from Jill to help Vicky use their power to open a fairy world portal so they can go to fairy world and take it over. Obviously, Viv and Roy stop them and Cracker is thrown into Fairy World Prison, but Vicky is still on Earth, so I don't know. And that was the Fairly Odd Parents, Fairly Otter Season 1. I guess you can say it was fairly underwhelming. Now, the animation for Cosmo and Wanda, it's fine. Everyone else is like freaking abysmal, but for Cosmo and Wanda, it's fine. You can tell that they were the ones who had the most effort put into them, because all the other anime characters look horrible, like Jorgen, Mr. Crocker from Fairy World, Fairy World The Location, whatever the heck this chick is, they're all animated badly. I will say that I could tell that some of the animation was rushed at times, like in episode 10, I swear, they just stopped animating them and they literally bounced from pose to pose, it was... It was really weird. I, th I thought my I thought my laptop just started freezing for a second. Also, the animation was entirely outsourced instead of being worked on in studio, so it made sense why this isn't on par from like the actual original FOP TV show. From what I can tell, this company who was in charge of making it usually does like special effects or CGI, so I'm guessing this was for their first rodeo for 2D animation. Not to mention that they're a pretty small company. Oh, and also the animation is done in Flash, so it does make some of the face expressions look pretty terrible. However, it is way better than season 10 of the original FOP. I don't care what you say, that's my opinion. Oh, and also I found this animation error. I don't know, I just wanted to point it out. Come on, it was so simple. You didn't... How hard was it to, like, fix this? Anyway, let's move on to the pros. Now, believe it or not, but this show actually has some pros. Who would have thought? For one, I like how it takes place a few years after the original show ended instead of being a prequel or just a live action version of the original series. I also like this little transition from 2D to live action, or I guess this is probably CG since I'm pretty sure that says probably fake. I also like how they brought back the rules and actually followed it. Cosmo and Wanda are no longer floating around in public, and the show doesn't try to get rid of their wands as a way to make it so Cosmo and Wanda can't stop the crazy wish. You know, I really shouldn't be praising this since it's just something to be expected, but my god, has FOP really been a bad show for like so many years? that I'm gonna take what I can get. I also like Vicky in the show. Like I said before, she's a teacher, and I like the idea of her coming across of all of Mr. Crocker's doodles about fairies, and then it caused her to remember about all the weird things that happened to her while she was babysitting Timmy. She's literally connecting the dots. For the pilot for the first episode of FOP, Vicky said this. I don't know what's going on around here, but I'm gonna find out. See ya, Vicky. It always bugged me that this was never touched upon besides this one episode. Like, what if Vicky actually tried to figure out what was happening, and then Timmy needed to hide his fairies that much more? I'm just glad this is finally being tackled. I also like Mr. Crocker's character. They actually brought back his original voice actor to voice him, which is very neat. Also, the theme song had no right to be as good as it really is, especially considering how bad the show is. I'm probably in the minority when I say that this lyric... Normal floating fish, until we your wish. 
is a better line than this one. Swans and wings! Floaty crowny thing! Though the original one is a lot more better and iconic than the new one. Just saying. Okay, so this is originally in the pros, however, it became too big, so I decided to separate it into its own thing, so yeah. Now, the one thing that I liked the most was Cosmo and Wanda, specifically their relationship. Now, a FOB fan will know that the characters were founderized really badly in the later seasons, and Cosmo and Wanda, who started as a pair of hopeless romantics, became really bitter towards each other and hated the mere thought of one another. Cosmo became a brain-dead moron who hated his wife and always made fun of her for being a nag, and Wanda became a nag who would just take her frustration out on Cosmo through abuse. It really was not fun to watch this couple, who were clearly in a loveless marriage, hating each other all for a throwaway joke. Now, why does this matter? It's because the reboot actually fixed this? Yeah, I'm shocked too, but they did. You see, Cosmo wanted to like each other now. Crazy, I know. It isn't the amount you see in the Yoya -Yo Cartoons days, but they're a lot more friendly towards each other than Season 5 of the original FOB. Cosmo isn't entirely stupid like he was in the later seasons. Like, yeah, he's dumb, but it's used more sparingly for jokes. But at least Cosmo can actually grant wishes like normal. And Wanda's no longer a nag. Also, another thing I like was how in this one episode, Wanda and Cosmo got separated for a bit, and it was Wanda who missed Cosmo, to the point that she did something dumb like granted a dumb wish, just a way to cope, and it was honestly really sweet. In another episode, Cosmo's ex, please bear with me here, she comes in, and Wanda does not like this, and Cosmo reassures her that he still loves her, and they even kiss. I mean, the kiss was badly animated, but they did. They even kind of stuff like a little silly nickname that like couples do, it was so sweet. They never did this in the original series, so that's one point for Fairly Otter versus Fops, 20,000. But yeah, that's all I got so far. So now it's time to move on to the cons. And I hope you can guess that there's gonna be a lot of cons. Okay, let me tell you right here, the show is actually, like, generally bad. For as much as it get right, it also gets everything else wrong. First of all, let me tell you, this show's probably the most generic Nickelodeon sitcom I have ever seen in my life. The only thing that makes it different is Cosmo and Wanda. Speaking of them, you know I praised them earlier? Well, they're barely in the show. They come in to make a wish, then leave for most of the episode occasionally checking in, which sucks since they're my favorite characters. The human cast is also bland. Roy and to a partial extent Viv, who doesn't really deserve fairies since they're meant to be given to miserable people, and these kids are anything but miserable. Oh Viv, you're not popular. Oh boo hoo, that totally makes you worth of fairies. And then not Chester, who lived in a freaking RV with just his dad, or not like Tootie, who had to live with Vicky. I feel so bad, my heartstrings are being pulled so hard. Boo hoo. Also, this show has literally every Butch Hartman joke out there. And then the opposite happens, that's here. A character says something really complex as a joke, that's here as well. One running gag that isn't funny, here again. This just takes every trope of Butch Hartman's writing style and dumps it here. And it would be funny if they did it every once in a while as a way to like poke fun at the original series, but no, it's in every episode, and they're all bad. I also found it weird how a lot of episodes take place in the school for some reason, which I've noticed is just something that Nickelodeon sitcoms do for some reason. The characters are also pretty two-dimensional and bland when it comes to the characters. The stepmom and dad are dancers, that's all they do. Roy is popular. This girl character is annoying and really loves Roy and there's nothing else. Stuff like that, it just makes them uninteresting and just stereotypes. Like I said before, if the animation isn't Cosmo and Wanda, it's beyond cheap and lazy. Which I'm starting to notice now is probably less because of the animators themselves and more because Nickelodeon didn't give them enough time to finish the show. Which is honestly really sad. Also, the, human, the humor itself is just really stupid. I watched most of this show by myself, but I decided to put one episode on for my family, and oh my god, this show is so dumb. I got secondhand embarrassment just by watching this with my family, it's that bad. Also, this show had a weird thing that Crocker's facing forward whenever he's animated for some reason, even though he never did that, and it's super unpleasing. Now, is there something that I'm forgetting? <laughs> Oh yeah, the laugh track! I hate it! I'm not a fan of the laugh track in like, really any show. I don't want to be told when to laugh. Plus, this laugh track is way too nice for the show. It's constantly going off. Like someone's just pushing a button and it's just like, laughs. It's so annoying. I also don't feel like the show can do 22 minutes. It got slightly better in later episodes, but in like the first three episodes, it's just not good. It just feels like an 11 minute episode works better for something like this. At first, you can the fact that the first episode felt like they were just filling it out just to fill up the runtime. Like, the theme song happens 8 minutes into the episode, why? Also, this is less of a con and more just something I noticed. I think episode 3 was supposed to come out after episode 6, since episode 6 introduced Vicky as a teacher, while episode 3 just had her in there and everyone knew her at that point, despite episode 6 reintroducing her and everyone didn't know who she was. And yeah, it's all really my complaints, to be honest. So, overall, Fairly Odd Parents, Fairly Otter is fairly underwhelming. The show, while not as bad as I thought it was going to be, is anything but good. Maybe okay at best. And I do not think it is worth subscribing to a streaming service just to watch it.
If anything, I feel like having it be on Nickelodeon is already a crime as it is. Put it on YouTube. These animations look like fan animations. Man, I'm still too happy. What else can I do? What is joy?